I am uh, Dr. Ravindra. I am a transplant surgeon working at the University of Louisville and I am interested in research related to transplant and I work very closely with Dr. Uh, Ilstad at the Institute of uh, Cellular Therapeutics. Let me uh, put it in historical perspective. Uh, in 1954 was the first year we had a successful uh, kidney transplantation and this was between living uh, people who were identical twins. At that time, we did not know how to transplant organs across genetic barriers. And over the last 20 years, we've had the development of much more potent drugs, which enable us to tr do transplantation across major immunological barriers without a problem. So those drugs, they are, they're like a double-edged sword. They help prevent rejection, sustain the graft in the recipient, but at the same time, there's a price to pay in the long term. And that price is mainly because the patient's immunity is being suppressed. Once they have a transplant in the first three to six months, they are on at least six to 10 different medications. We try to uh, run those drug levels in a particular range. If they are below that range, there's a risk of rejection. They go higher than that range, they get side effects. Imagine somebody has to do this day after day, month after month, year after year, uh, taking the drug four, drugs four times a day. Yeah, this is a lot, a lot to expect. And if we can successfully infuse bone marrow and uh, make them tolerant, so we are over, we are, uh, I mean, getting rid of a whole lot of problems. There's no, role, there's no need for drug monitoring. There is no need, I mean, these additional costs due to the immunosuppression are removed. There is no need for prophylactic antibiotics and antivirals because the immunity is no longer suppressed. And who knows? I mean, we think that if uh, this research can be taken to the next step would be, can we get previous transplant recipients off immunosuppression? That would be the next goal. I, I'm hopeful because uh, this is based on some uh, solid foundation from animal data, experimental data from the lab. And uh, what we have seen in the past is most of the data does translate into the human field, into the clinical field, with some modifications. I, I'm a firm believer that it's going to work. This is probably, if it happens, when it happens, it's the next big thing in transplant. The next big step has to be getting people off these drugs. And that, that is going to revolutionize transplant. I worked in India and England and here uh, as a physician, we have a limited shadow we cast. But when you change a basic concept, that casts a big shadow all around the globe. This research, if it, if it takes fruit, it's going to impact people all around the world. Here in the United States, drugs to a large extent are covered by insurance companies or people pay out of their pocket in some instances. But in major parts of the world, this is not taken off purely because of cost. And this is a genuine problem, which, is, which very few understand. In the initial stages, because this is done on a very small number of patients, this is going to be expensive. And so, but this is, at the same time, we think that this research has a lot of promise. We think that this is going to ultimately change, change things. When it's applied in, across the board on a mass scale, this is going to drastically reduce transplant costs. The insurance companies are very closely looking at things, what are research, what is non-research, and once it's identified as research, none of this is, gets covered. You know, every state reaches a state of equilibrium and then somebody has to raise the bar. And that's what we are trying to do. This has implications not only for transplant, there could be a lot of spin-offs to other fields of medicine. For more information, please visit nfctr.org. Thank you.